would be in a pine box. Tommy Tuberville quit the next week. He quit on his players at Auburn, but still collected a $5 million buyout and $250,000 no-show job before moving on to Texas Tech. He quit on his players at Texas Tech, too, even walking out of a dinner with a recruit to take the job at Cincinnati. Then in his last coaching job, Tommy Tuberville quit on his players again. And as he slinked away to booze, he told Cincinnati students to go to hell. Hey, go to hell! Get a job! Hey, go to hell! Get a job! Now, after moving to Alabama just 18 months ago, he wants you to trust him as your United States Senator? It's a six-year term. Fear the thumb, remember the quitter. I'm Senator Doug Jones, and I approve this message because I'll never quit on the people of Alabama. At Credible.com, we've helped tens of thousands of people save money by refinancing their student loans. In three minutes, we'll get you actual rates from multiple lenders. We could save you hundreds of dollars a month. Visit Credible.com to see how much you could save. I got things I want to do, but student loans were holding me back. Credible.com helped me save $600 a month with a great rate. Now I can go do what I want to do. Visit Credible.com to see how much you could save on your student loans. Kevin Harris had three touchdowns in one game against Charleston Southern last season. Kind of burst on the scene as the year went on, and now he's the workhorse, at least through the first drive of the year. Gamecocks up 7-0. Jeter will kick it deep to Bryce Thompson and Jarrett Garantano said more ups and downs than the Dutton family on Yellowstone will take the field for the Tennessee Vols here as they come out to the 25 yard line. This guy has played in 34 games with 25 starts came off the bench in three of the current six games that Tennessee has won in a row. It was quite a high wire act for Jarrett Garantano a season ago and for the coaching staff having to manage where he was middling from a confidence standpoint they are insistent that he is the leader in the quarterback that they need right now in Tennessee he goes straight to Ty Chandler one of the two workhorses for Tennessee on offense and Ty immediately picks up seven Garantano is the constant at quarterback but they're, they've lost Jawan Jennings, who had this remarkable turnaround as a senior. What's the identity of Tennessee's offense this year, Stench? Well, I think if you're Jim Chaney, you just saw it on that first play. Physical, downhill, inside run. You get a flat back, a dump at right guard and center. Garantano has all kinds of time and throws a strike across the middle up to the 45-yard line, and that's Ramel Keaton with the first reception of the season for Jeremy Pruitt. Now in his third season as the head coach at UT on this six-game winning streak, a year ago at this time, Tennessee fans are thinking, man, Pruitt's not going to make it. Maybe not make it another week. He just got a contract extension through 2025. Amazing what a difference a six-game winning streak will make. First down balls at the 45-yard line, and Chandler gets up near the 49 to pick up the four. Jay Graham, new running backs coach at Tennessee. A lot of new faces for Jeremy Pruitt. He gets the extension, brought in some new faces to try to build on that momentum. They need Ty Chandler to be more elusive, play more physically. Nice run there, and his first touch of the game. Garantano from a clean pocket throws the out ball and he incomplete had his receiver too. Ramel Keaton wide open but just overshot him incomplete. And Shiloh Sanders coming over from safety. And Israel Mukwamu a little bit of miscommunication in the back end. As that is a wide open receiver in Ramel Keaton and just overshot Garantano early on last season had difficulty pulling the trigger on the open underneath routes and dialing in his downfield throws. Already a missed opportunity downfield there. Balls were 43% on third down last year. In trouble, Garantano slips out of one guy, but can't out of the next. Big sack for the Gamecocks, J.J. Inigbari forcing the fourth down. And talking with defensive coordinator Travaris Robinson, they think J.J. and Bari can be dominant. 
not just good, dominant. That time, it was Ernest Jones, usually from an inside linebacker position, that time blocking off the edge to make Garantano flush backwards instead of being able to step up in the pocket where J.J. Ambari was just waiting for him. Paxton Brooks will kick it deep to Jamie Robinson. Brooks, the junior from nearby Lexington, South Carolina, and he's lucky there's a whistle. Tonight's referee is Ken Williamson. What a start for the Gamecocks. Then getting a stop on defense. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. You just saw Will Muschamp looking on on the sidelines. Will known to be a defensive mastermind in college football as a coordinator and as a head coach as his teams have littered the NFL draft. If he can get an offense to complement that defense, South Carolina can make some noise. That's the piece. That's the dragon that Will Muschamp has yet to slay as a head coach. And it's been somewhat of a revolving door of play callers, a promising opening drive, and as you mentioned, an excellent stop by his defense. Dribbled back, and Brooks is going to try to throw. In trouble, throws it ahead, and up to the 37-yard line. Tennessee with a disastrous start as Brooks is in all kinds of trouble facing pressure and the Gamecocks have a short field. We talk about defense, tackling, the inability to practice. And one of the things Jeremy Pruitt mentioned, something he was terrified by, was special teams. A dribbler back there to Brooks. He ends up panicking and stands up, almost trying to complete a pass. I find it hard to believe they would have had anything called on. It's purely a function of that bad deep snap. And you have to wonder how much of this offseason, the preseason prep, will impact this game already in special teams, giving the Gamecocks excellent field position on their second Illegal possession. Touching on the offense, the receiver was an ineligible receiver. That penalty will be declined. It's all the play. First down. I was going to say, Will Albright, who had the poor snap, was the guy that made that catch. You can't snap it and then catch it. So it's illegal touching. The Gamecocks are set up with a short field at the Volunteer 38. The mistakes you're seeing from Tennessee speak to what you said, Stinch. A lack of practice time for South Carolina. Hill goes back to Harris again, and Kevin won't get much, if anything, there. It'll be second and 10. Kenneth George on the tackle. Mr. Brooks over there. He's like, hey, listen, man. You got to get your head on straight. I got to get a clean pass back there to me. You're going to get other opportunities. You see this sometimes. He can't afford to have his deep snapper and Albright going in the tank. Looks like it's a pretty stern talking to right there. But also just trying to encourage. There's going to be other punts in this game, especially if the Carolina defense is able to bow its neck the way it did versus that opening possession for Tennessee. Play clock running down, and Colin Hill is going to burn South Carolina's first timeout. Timeout, South Working back with you alongside Andre Ware, Taylor Davis, three to nothing, Vanderbilt leading Texas A&M here in the first quarter. But 2020 has been an unprecedented year in so many ways. Thankfully, we have college football that was in doubt. It was in doubt in 1919, 101 years ago, when they had the Spanish flu epidemic going on, and that's when Coach Dana X Bible 
Martin, a former Aggies legendary coach, wrote to one of his players, Chick Harrison, urging him to play in the 1919 season, saying a rebirth of college spirit has come into the hearts of every A&M man. And they would wind up playing, going undefeated, and later crowned national champions of 1919. So here we are, 101 years later, Andre Ware. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is that an omen that it's getting ready to happen again? Oh, this is a talented bunch. You know, we I don't know if they can't can rule it out. Yeah, I mean, they outscored their opponents 275 to nothing. So that would be that would definitely be a hard act to follow. <laughs> it's one thing to no, go I, undefeated. It's another thing not to give up a point. I do think it's a talented group that uh, they have everything in front of them. I mean, everything. It, a talented offensive line, a defensive front. That gives you a chance right there. And then you have a, a quarterback starting for, in this offense, for his third year, third consecutive year. Got to like their chances. Mond, 22-12, and 12, lifetime as a starter. Hands it off to Smith. Modest game before brought down by Anthony Orji. Yeah, Jimbo Fisher, head coach told us that uh, he's just been a different guy during camp just different correcting uh, these young receivers that you talk about really just kind of leading everybody both you know through his play as well as verbally he's just just different than in his senior year on first down Mon rifles it complete at the 39 breaking one tackle and racing down the sideline trucking defenders inside the 40 and finally brought down is Anias Smith what a catch and run by the sophomore out of Sugarland Texas yeah what you like as a quarterback and as a coach is that he catches the ball gets right up the field there's no wasted movement it's a hit it vertically and then I'm gonna get just physical with everybody and then you love that at the end two hands on the football to make sure that it doesn't come out they love their two-headed monster at tailback with Smith and Isaiah Spiller a pair of talented sophomores now in plus territory now first down and ten Mon gives to the up back and that'll be Spiller bulldozing ahead for a couple Andre Mintz on the stop for the Commodores now we mentioned it for Vanderbilt, one of the keys to this game, limit the run. They can't live in second down and short all game long. It is a recipe for disaster. Got to figure out a way to stop this Texas A&M running game. Fifth play of the drive for the Aggies. Well, he's got press coverage, a little hitch down here at the bottom. He backs off. Mond out of the pocket. Misses one complete, making defenders miss, and finally brought down inside the 25 yard line. That is the freshman Cam Brown, the son of the former Super Bowl MVP Larry Brown. That's nice, quick out. Ball's on time where he can do something with it after the catch, and then that's just determination in terms of the yards after the catch. Go ahead and give me a few more. His father was a 12th round draft pick of the Dallas Cowboys, turned into a fine pro, and again, an MVP of the Super Bowl. From the 25, Mond surveys and in and out of the hands of Chapman. So that's what, my, three drops now, Andre? I don't know if my count is accurate. I was going to say three or four. I thought it was maybe a fourth drop because he started the drive. 0 for 3, and it seemed like everything in that first drive was dropped. This may be nerves from a young group, but hey, it's, it's game day. Commodores, four man front, on second and 10. Mon, little pitch play to the near side. Past the 20, inside the 10, lunging for the end zone, touchdown! Anais Smith, what a run! I thought earlier Vanderbilt was going to go to it when they were down in the red zone against Texas A&M. On their initial drive, well, it's A&M that comes back with the option. Nice, quick decision by Kellen Mon, And then the rest, Smith just showing his athletic ability, getting him into the end zone. Boy, what a run after after the option pitch. 
Got to love this duo of running backs for Texas A&M, Aniah Smith and Isaiah Spiller. Two extremely talented sophomores. A seven play, 75 yard drive. Extra point by Seth Small is knocked through and the Aggies take the lead. 3.33 to go from College Station, AM 7, Vanderbilt 3. Dari, thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you guys later tonight. The best recap show in the country for my money. Dari Noka, Chris Doring, Coach Chiswick do a fantastic job and a, a wild and wacky opening weekend so far in the <laughs> SEC, Andre. Well, Waddle already doing his thing at, Al at Alabama. New quarterback, not much changes for the Crimson Tide. They have got some great skill position players. Ken Seals back out after that impressive opening drive. Vanderbilt settled for the field goal. This is the third drive for the new look Commodores offense. And an important drive for this young quarterback, Seals, in terms Wakefield. of his confidence. Probes the left side and is stonewalled. Ran right into big number 92, Jaden Peavy, who goes 6'6, 295. He just fought an ankle injury early last season and still put up some good numbers as a defensive tackle with two and a half sacks to go along with 34 tackles. Is always around the football, always creating just, you know, havoc in the middle of that Texas A&M defense. 
On second and nine. Little pit, little toss. Out to Wakefield for a short gain as we check in with Taylor Davis. Well, Andre, going back to what you were say saying about Jaden Peavy, he's actually someone that caught my attention pregame. He was one of the first guys out here and one of the last to leave. He had his AirPods in, was doing a lot of individual drills, looked like a lot of visualization, mental reps. This guy is locked in. It's no surprise to see his productivity on the field. Well, he's taking over that spot left by Justin Matabuke. Big shoes to fill there. With time, Seals uncorks a deep ball, and it's somehow caught. What a magic reception there by Abdur Rahman, who oh, reels it in in front of Fuller. Excellent throw. Nice job of working and stopping as you're rolling. Just stopping to try, you know, find a way. Fit it in the best way you certainly can. And when you have one-on-one -on -one coverage, a lot of things happen. And sometimes in a good way for the quarterback. 27 yards and a first down. Commodores back in plus territory. AM might have jumped. Passes on the money and bobbled incomplete. Intended for Abdur Rahman again. And again covered on the play by Fuller. He had a great year in 2018 and was hurt all of last season. But you start to see the size pierce is that this uh, this Vanderbilt receiving crew has 6'4", and then, you know, two guys at 6'4", catching passes for you. You don't really have to be perfect as a quarterback. You just get it in the vicinity of these guys. Have you been impressed by Ken Seal so far? I have because you can tell he's played a lot of football. He's I like the, the body language so far, especially in an environment like like he's playing in. Grinding out another run is Jamari Wakefield, the most physical of the backs. That's for Mike, on another tackle for the Aggies. I've been impressed overall with this Vanderbilt offense. I know they, they punted the football their last drive, but right now, and that first drive, just solid football. Again, breaking tackles is Jamari Wakefield, finally brought down by the last level of defense, Leon O'Neill. Boy, he's one of those backs that over time during a game, you're, you're not willing to step in there and go one on one with him. You're going to find a shoelace, an ankle. You're not taking him on but above the waist in the fourth quarter. And you mentioned the troubles for Vanderbilt offensively last year. They averaged 16 and a half points a game. That was dead last in the conference. They'll keep it on the ground. This time it's going to be Marlowe, but this time. It'll be a loss on the play. O'Neal drops him down behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, trying to find a one-two punch with Wakefield and Marlowe, and I think they've got it. You've got speed and uh, excellent zone runner with Marlowe. You've got the power game coming from Jamari Wakefield. But an excellent play in the backfield there by Leon O'Neal, who is who they told us. Coach Elko told us the safety is going to be big in this game, filling the alleys, tackling in space one-on-one. -on -one. Again on the ground. Modest gain for Marlowe. In on the stop to Marvin Leal, and that is a young man number eight for Texas A&M who's got all kinds oh. of ability. A uh, five-star recruit and a broken bone, I think, in his hand last year. Really slowed him, but he has had an outstanding fall camp, and every coach on this staff just raves about that young man. Vanderbilt holding strong through a one quarter of play. The Aggies lead it seven to three. Nueva Frontier X Gear. Diseño que combina con todos los terrenos.
tonight. It's the premiere of SEC Football Final, hosted by Darinoka, Gene Chizik, Chris Doring, and the newest member, Roman Harper. He'll take you through the biggest stories from the day and break all the games down. It's at 10.30 Eastern time right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Back with you at Kyle Field, College Station. Vanderbilt's been good on third down. They've got a third and 11 here. Seals, the freshman, quick pass inside, and AM read it all the way. And the big fella that we just talked about, Leal, agile at six foot four, 290 pounds, and getting out in space making plays. Now, we know he can make plays between the tackles, but when you can do that, that's just, just raw athletic ability. A force a field goal attempt here for Vanderbilt. Cook hit one earlier on the first drive. This one will be from 45 yards out. They say he's got a great leg from 50 and in. Snap is good. Hold is true. And it will hook left. Plenty of distance. Just started hooking on him. Man, shopping at Academy is such an experience. It's like fun you didn't even know you needed. All over the place. It's everywhere. What? Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. So help me if you want to. I'd love to. <laughs> Laura's Good already work. in mid-season shopping form. Laura, it's great work. So do these fans here at Texas A&M. They. Did their yell practice last night, ready to go. A lot of students yeah, tons in the crowd here tonight. Yeah, tons of tradition at this university. Between 25 and 30,000 fans in attendance at Kyle Field. Watching with Kellen Mond, the senior, rifling one complete in the flat far side for a pickup of eight yards. And every decision has been a quick one by Kellen Mond. It tells you. Hey, he knows the offense, scans, and has made a decision. The ball comes out, and that gives you a chance to be accurate. When you're plugged in between the ears, you're going to play so much better because you know exactly where to go with the football, and that's what starting in an offense for three three years has done for Kellen Mond. Chapman on the reception, sets up a second and two. Again, a flare. Caught at the 35, juking his way to the 40-yard line is Jalen Preston as we check in with Taylor. Well, guys, after that Texas A&M touchdown, Derek Mason gathered his defense on the sideline. He calmed them down, said don't get discouraged, but he did say, I want you to wrap up legs in space. We're tackling too high. He said these guys are elusive. You can't let them escape your grasp. Derek Mason, of course, knows a thing or two about defense. Yeah, already. Stanford. Already, Kellen Mond has found five different receivers, and we're extremely early in this ball game, but continuing to spread it around. Mond out of the shotgun with time over the middle, complete. That's Chase Lane with his second catch. Young man out of Houston, Texas. He has really come on from a hamstring injury that he suffered early in camp, but. This is the receiver that Kellen Mond said that he had the most chemistry with. Expect him to, to find Chase Lane in some third down situations because of that chemistry. Guys have worked together throughout the offseason, caught a lot of passes. And their roommates. And their roommates. Never hurts from the chemistry standpoint. Now from the 37-yard line of Vanderbilt. Mond on the handoff. Trying to find daylight to no avail. Anaya Smith stopped by one of the top defensive linemen in the league. That is Dio Odangbo, the senior out of Irving, Texas. And he has got some frame at 6'6", 276. A guy that can run 4-6. <laughs> 2nd team uh, preseason All-SEC is just a solid football player across the board and defending the run and certainly getting after the passer. Played with his brother on this Commodore defense a year ago. A 
loss of a couple on the play. Second and 12. Five in the pattern for Mon. Goes underneath. Completes it to his big tight end, Weidermeyer. And Weidermeyer, all 6'5", 265 of them, bangs his way to a couple of extra yards. And you see why, you know, he is. he was second team all SEC as a true freshman. Love the after the catch ability. Got the, the ability to make guys miss in space. He stretches the field, and that makes you know, that that's really a compliment to the running game. They can do so much when you can get the tight end up the field. Gain of 11 sets up a third down and one. Spiller the lone back. And Mond will feed him. Spiller, second effort, should have enough for the first down out to the 25. Well, he is the thumper in this offense at 6'1", 225, but also shows the ability to make defenders miss. Pretty good pedigree, too. The son of former Aggies tight end Fred Spiller. Yeah. 975 yards rushing in 2019, and I'll tell you what, I'd go right back. Actually, it's enough for the first down. They're going to go ahead and move the chains. Or maybe take a look at it. First charge time out of the half, Vanderbilt. 10-21 to go, first half, Aggies on top, 7-3. To Nueva Frontier X Gear. Diseño que combina con todos los terrenos. How about that? One of the best SEC games really of all time. Had a chance to catch about half of the overtimes in that one. Seventh play of the drive for the Aggies. Mon lobs one end zone incomplete. Well covered on the play by that Vanderbilt secondary. Jalen Preston, the intended target. Interesting play selection. It, it's been run dominant on first down for the Aggies. Seven, seven passes, only two runs. And that just shows you the confidence that Jimbo Fisher has in his senior quarterback, Kellen Mond, to come out on first down, let him throw it around a little bit. 
And you like that timeout by Vanderbilt before the break, didn't you, Andre? I do. I liken it to uh, basically a run in basketball. We felt like a and starting to get hot. Go ahead and call the timeout, rest his players a little bit, and, and push the reset button. Aggies. Great move in the open field. Inside the 10 and down to the two-yard line. What a juke by Anias Smith. We were just talking during the break about that young man, and he, he just a football player. Can do it as a receiver last season, and then he comes back this year. We caught 22 passes last year and three touchdowns. Comes back this year has moved to running back, but the same production. Holding. Offense, number 85. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Remain second down. And that will bring it back. Jalen Weidermeyer, the tight end, guilty of the holding call. This negates a 24-yard pass play. On a big 6'5", 265-pound tight end. And space just... The guy starts to slip or move, and it's just you reach a little bit, and then all of a sudden, uh, here comes the, the yellow flag. 10-21 to play first half. Aggies leading it 7-3. And second down and 19. Mon, quick pass, a little inside screen, and now trying to weave his way. Out of traffic is Chase Lane going all the way across the field and finally escorted out of bounds by Dimitri Moore. 53 and a third yards wide is the field, and he got just about all of it. <laughs> I mean, stretching it out and not a whole lot uh, on the tail end of it. As Alston Orgy credited for the tackle. This is when Vanderbilt has to get off the field, Mike. Got to come up big on third downs, which Roof talked to us about that this week. See if they're able to do it here. Third and 13. Three-man rush by Vandy. Mond has it knocked out of his hand. That might be a free ball. Scooped up by Vanderbilt and brought down at the 46-yard line. We'll see what they call on the play, but it's Mintz scooping up the football. The ruling on the field Whoa. was a fumble recovered by the defense. The pass rush of Andre Mintz to get to the arm of Kellen Mon and deflect the ball out. Not sure if his arm was going forward or not, but what an effort by Andre Mintz, the senior outside linebacker. Mintz knocked it loose. Jerkins on the recovery for Vanderbilt. Had an interesting conversation with that young man and just very passionate about his senior year. See if indeed Kellamon's arm was coming for. I don't think so. I think it's I think that's a fumble. Yep. Empty no hand. No doubt about it. Yeah. So Commodores take over on the turnover. Texas A&M last year was dead last in turnover margin, minus six. And a costly turnover there. And that will cost you a lot of ball games when you're minus six on the season. That's how they that's exactly why a talented roster finished eight and five. You turn it right. over. Even my 12 and under AAU team, I tell them all the time, you turn the ball ball over, you, you're gonna put yourself in a position to lose games. On second and nine, and lasso down. It's like Leal on the tackle. Of Ken Seals. Well, you are talking about something special in Leal. I mean, the ability to change directions. That's the second essentially open field tackle. Vanderbilt tried to run a screen. He was out in the open field making a tackle. This is a defensive lineman we're talking about. Yeah, five star recruit out of San Antonio. Third down and eight for the Commodores. Rolling out right, the freshman Seals. On Corks one into double coverage and incomplete. A tough one. Tried to thread the needle to Cam Johnson, but he was well covered on the play. Well, you just don't want anything bad to happen if you're your Ken Seals. Go ahead and that's why you punt the football. You want every drive to end on a kick of some sort, whether it's an extra point, a field goal, or a punt. But you don't want to turn the ball over and give the momentum right back to this Aggie defense. Smith on the punt for the Commodores. 
And Anaya Smith, fleet of foot back to receive. Oof. I mean, every time he touches it, he has you on the edge of his seat because you don't know what move he's going to pull out at that particular time. He's going to field this one in the end zone. He's thinking about taking it out. Oh, he's going. Forget about a touchback. And not a good decision that he's wrapped up at the 10 yard line. Yeah, they're going to have a block in the back, so half the distance. Trying to free him up. I'm not sure exactly who it was, but clearly a block in the back. Right there. Maybe Brian George went a, a reserve corner. Trying to help his punt returner out a little bit, but Jimbo's given given Anias an earful for bringing that baby out, and not letting <laughs> yeah. it bounce to the back. That's two, that's two times that yep. uh, both Chase Lane should have let should have uh, down the ball in the end zone, and right. and there Anias Smith should have gone ahead and let that one go through During and get the, return, the ball. Personal foul, blindside block, number sixteen of the receiving team. The foul occurred in the end zone. By rule, the result of the play is a safety. Oh, goodness. Oh, wow. So two points on the board for Vanderbilt. Crucial mistake by the Aggies. Commodore is the benefactor of a safety on a punt return. Now seven to five hour score. And Andre, we're going to see two critical mistakes on this play. Yeah, a lot of coachable points on this one particular play. You're supposed to plant your feet at the 10 yard line and not go backwards. And if it goes over your head, let it go into the end zone. Then the block in the back is kind of really adding on to an already bad situation that's taken place. You and I were talking over the break. I don't think I've ever seen a safety on a punt return because normally you don't return a punt from the end zone. <laughs> so really confident yeah. in his abilities, maybe a little bit too confident for Coach Fisher, who caught him right as he was coming off the field. And so did Brian George. He got a, a pretty good talking to as well. Not only is it two points, it's possession and a severe momentum change for Vanderbilt. Returning it from the 10 and rocked. At about the 27 28 yard lines so the Commodores will get it back with 715 to go first half. You see some of the mistakes already by Texas A&M four drop passes a lost fumble and now a safety on a penalty on a ball that should not have been returned. You know, we we mentioned the turnover margin last in the SEC last year yeah. took a ton of sacks 
And some of the little things, this is what Jimbo Fisher is trying to do. It's not just about the talent at Texas A&M. They've got athletes, but trying to clean things up overall. It's just the little things that, that really win you ball games or they can cause you problems uh, on your way to a win. And Big hole left side. Sorry about that, Mike. No problem. Marlowe out to the 40-yard line. A nice block here. It's kind of a it's a front side trap. And Marlowe, who's more of the zone runner, does an excellent job in terms of some positive yards on first down. Seals. Trying to get to the edge. Not exactly a burner. They don't use him much running the football. Damani Richardson on the tackle. That's the other very talented safety for Texas A&M, number 26, the sophomore. You know what that run was? Just keeping the defense honest. To let Keep you them know honest, that right? We're capable of doing it, and so we want to make you defend it or think about it. Looking for something positive there, but unable to, to, to hit the big one that they really wanted to hit with Seals. Trips to the near side on second down and six. Breaking tackles, busting outside, and getting first down yardage is Javion Marlowe. I'll tell you what, Vanderbilt came down here from from Nashville and they have decided that they're going to make it as tough a football game as they possibly can give credit to the offensive line who's put who's opened up some pretty good holes for Marlowe and Wakefield 11 yard pickup for a first down this one will be about a gain of a yard as Wakefield is spun down near the line of scrimmage you know it's, it's early Andre we've only seen less than a half of football but I already like this Vanderbilt offense more than what I saw a year ago, and they Aren't lost kidding. so much talent from that offense a year ago. You're talking about three pros. Yeah, and moves some, some guys around. Drew Birchmeyer moves over from defense where he, where he played defensive line. He's now the starting left guard and has found a home there. Give Todd Fitch a lot of credit, the new offensive coordinator. A little screen pass, and it'll be positive yardage for Jamari Wakefield. Well, I think... Derek Mason hit a home run with Todd Fitch, giving a bunch of different looks. We talked about the multiple personnel groupings, and I'm hoping this is something that Bobby Brown can bounce back from because he is a big, big part of this A&M front seven. All SEC candidate Bobby Brown down. We'll get an update when we come back. Frontier X Gear. Diseño que combina con todos los terrenos.
you're talking about Bobby Brown, you're talking about one of the best defensive tackles in the SEC. Kind of an awkward looking play. Not a lot of contact here as we watch him go into the tent, Andre, but it was tough to see where this injury happened. Yeah, I think it was one of the Vanderbilt linemen, just kind of uh, Dan Dawkins. Doesn't block him hard, but it's maybe a leg gave or something, gave out. I'm not sure, but. It didn't look good for Bobby Brown. I'm encouraged though that he was able to get off the field on his on his own. Third and two. Vandy's been good on third down tonight, but not this time. Stonewalled at the line of scrimmage. I thought Seals should have kept that one. Coming with a little zone read and, and he shows it inside to Wakefield and the Aggies go crashing down. But that was the perfect time to pull one. And maybe uh, maybe even walk to the first down marker now looks like it's more like three and a half almost four yards to yeah. pick up the first down Leon O'Neill who we talked about earlier singing his praises leading the charge on that last stop so fourth and four decision time you're at the, the Aggies 39 so you probably had a field goal range here yeah you're Vanderbilt why not go for it right fourth and four he's calling a timeout get the best play call get Todd charge time out of the opportunity half. Vanderbilt. To really come up with their best play call, AM leading it 7 5 when we come back. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 4 0 5. Nueva Frontier X Gear. Diseño que combina con todos los terrenos. Yes, not exactly the score you would expect in a football game, but look, Vanderbilt will take it. Sometimes ugly is good. Vanderbilt getting a field goal and a safety. Safety coming on a penalty on a punt return by Texas A&M in the end zone. Now here we go on fourth down. Commodores trying to draw the Aggies off sides. Take, go ahead.
Uh, but, they're but, applauding. but he plays with so much confidence, and you really don't want to, you know, tame that down to a point where he's back there apprehensive. You want to want him to play with that kind of confidence, but be smart about it. Taylor, what do you have? Well, guys, speaking about Vanderbilt linebacker Andre Mintz, he's actually a jack of all trades. He's a very talented vlogger and video producer, and recently he put out a video of senior cornerback Alan George proposing to his girlfriend, Caitlin Richardson, a Vanderbilt cheerleader. The video has gotten over 22,000 videos on his YouTube channel. I loved it. I watched that this morning. That was well done. Okay, so done. the setup is it's going to be a photo shoot, senior photos. I'm going to let you all know a little secret. It's not really senior photos. AG is proposing. Oh, try facing this way. On me, facing, facing that way, way, yeah. Okay, now like turn around and then do a hair flip. Like, face the other way. Like, like this. Like, like this. Like this. Like this. She kissed me. She kissed me. Oh, she's in here. Yeah! Ah! <laughs> That's Alan George who is proposing to his girlfriend of two years. She said yes, beautifully captured by the future filmmaker Andre Mintz. How about the backflip by Alan George? Well, he learned that from his future wife, the cheerleader. <laughs> On second down at 11, Mon sails that one a bit high, intended for Chapman. Davion Davis, big. Defensive tackle in there giving chase on Kellen Mon and all of a sudden Vanderbilt's finding some creases in this offensive line. A couple of series ago it was Andre Mintz and then there Davion Davis. Gotta find a way to fix things up front so your quarterback's comfortable. How about this Vanderbilt defense holding the Aggies to 119 yards of offense in this first half and just seven points. On third down, Mond under pursuit, steps up in the pocket, cocks and fires, almost intercepted. That was in and out of the hands of Deshaun Jerkins. And Caleb Chapman, the end of intended receiver on the back end, but Jerkins almost came up with a gift. I mean, the pressure by Mintz again forces Kellen Mond to step up. You make a quarterback uncomfortable and then Rewards happen on the back end, so it was the play the, or the pressure of Mintz, the outside linebacker, on, on Kellen Mond once again. Vanderbilt, Mike, they're here to play. Cam Johnson back to receive the punt. It's a short one angling out of bounds. And Vanderbilt will take over with 2.59 to go in the first half. Good field position all the way out to the 43-yard line. Don't forget, next Saturday, we got another triple hitter on the SEC Network. It all starts at noon with Missouri and Tennessee, and then Ole Miss, Kentucky at 4 p.m. And then on SEC Saturday night at 7.30 Eastern time, sixth-ranked LSU. Of course, that's going to change after what happened today against Mississippi State. They'll be battling these Vanderbilt Commodores also on the Alt Network. Arkansas and Mississippi State. How about Mike Leach? How about that catch? Beautiful Mike pass Leach. and a great job of holding on. That's making Preston grand, and the tight end. Yeah, but Mike Leach making a grand entrance into the SEC. Down in Baton Rouge. But how about the timing? Uh, Ken Seals to his big tight end, Ben Bresnahan. And, I mean, that's got to be timed perfectly between three, not two, but three Aggie defenders. From the 40, draw play, and not much there. Stacked up after a gain of about a couple miles. Jones stopping Javion Marlowe. Impressive footwork by Marlowe because he was had to make his first move right after the handoff. He was still in the backfield, and whatever he got, the two yards he picked up, that's bonus. That's a heck of a job of making guys miss between the tackles. Vanderbilt on first down tonight. 11 runs and just one pass. Playing 
Fairly conservative for the freshman who's looked good so far. This time, though, a screen pass set up, and AM was all over it. Pass caught by Justin Ball, the tight end, but he was surrounded. And a, an excellent play from the safety. Damani Richardson kind of sniffed out the screen, knew it was there, and was right in the hip pocket of Bresnahan when he made the catch. Third down at 11. Seals. Cox a deep ball. And nowhere near any intended target there. Might not have been on the same page intended perhaps for Abdur Rahman. Abdur Rahman kind of hooked up the route. Seals thinking that he's going to go ahead and run the fade to the end zone. And the two are kind of not on the same page there. You hate it because it's, it just burns an opportunity to put together some type of scoring drive. And right away, you can see the disgust from Ken Seals. Sideline warning, Texas A&M. That is their first warning of the game. So you got a minute 24 left. The yeah, Aggies offense of for the most part has sputtered in this first half. Really fortunate really to be up by two points. And it's a respectable first half for Kellen on nine of 16 for 99 yards but but with a bunch of drops mixed in there. Fair catch in traffic. Hauled in by Anaya Smith. You see, I mean, this is Vanderbilt's kind of game right here. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to win a shootout with the Aggies tonight, but you've got more plays, more yards, and you're dominating time of possession, ball control for the Commodores. You're up six minutes in that category in terms of time of possession, and you're just getting more opportunities than, uh, than the other team. And with that, come some success that this is right where if, if we'd asked Derek Mason when we talked to him this week hey he had a chance to go to halftime and the score is seven to five would you take it absolutely he would have taken it I think Ted Roof the new defensive coordinator would have taken it as well from the 16 Mon looking to run Mon nowhere to run nowhere to hide sacked Oh, Dangbo brings him down. Talked about the creases that this defensive line, and they're not blitzing. It's just the front four taking care of business, keeping Kellen Mond, and that might have been a designed quarterback draw. But by the way that by Kellen Mond's body language, but they didn't allow him to get outside the box. And then when you have that happen, you got a chance. Now do they take a chance here? Or do they play a conservative with the clock ticking down under 45 seconds to go first half? Now my foot would still be on the gas. And they will put it on the ground and that will likely be the final play of the first half. A half that Vanderbilt will gladly take. I mean, yeah. When that started, there were 43 seconds. You had two time, three timeouts. All your timeouts in your back pocket. Third and final charge time. Call one of those. Vanderbilt. And Vanderbilt's trying to take advantage of it. Come up Play big here on third down and maybe maybe get a possession. Clock. I doubt it. Back the game clock. Well, Vanderbilt calls timeout. That'll stop the clock. 17 seconds left. Thank he you. has. He being Derek Mason has found two outstanding and I mean outstanding coordinators. Mm -hmm. now, the way the game is is managed now coordinators are so important and when you yeah. can bring in veteran guys who have produced at multiple spots like a Ted Roof like a Todd Fitch that's just huge. I think that's why when we talked to Derek Mason earlier in the week he sounded so optimistic about this season just felt good despite losing a lot of key players from last year. Right. I think it feels like his staff is the best maybe he's had. 
He also told us about some young players that nobody's seen yet. That he knew that he'd had, you know, a couple of talented recruiting classes, especially this freshman class that he just brought in. Feels like this may be the best one that he's had in the seven years he's been a head coach. And so now you've got some explosiveness on both sides of the ball. Vandy with no timeouts left, so that will indeed be the final play as Mon takes a knee. Vanderbilt has taken a little bit of the life out of Kyle Field in the first half. Just a two-point lead for the Aggies. Texas A&M, an early touchdown. Vanderbilt, an early field goal, and a safety on a punt return by Texas A&M. Taylor Davis down on the field trying to get in position. Taylor, take it away. Coach, you told us week one would be a lot about not causing self-inflicted wounds. We saw a couple of those in the first half. How would you assess that effort? Very, very poorly. I mean, we had two major screw-ups on special teams. I mean, that, that's ridiculous what happened there. We uh, have a big penalty. We're down to the two-yard line. We, only, we had the three and out. Then we scored a touchdown. And we got another driver to the two. Then we have a play on third down. Got a guy wide open. We're going to throw the touchdown, get it knocked out of our hand. And then we have the bad drive down here on that. We only had it four times. So, I mean, we need to clean it up. We're giving up too many uh, third down conversions on defense, too many run yards in there. Play a little soft inside. We got to get more physical on both sides of the ball and control the line of scrimmage. I'm not happy with the line of scrimmage at all. And we got to make people smarter with the football. This Vanderbilt defense has held your team to just one score. How do you increase offensive production? Well, go out and execute. Execute and get the ball back. We would only had it three times until the last time. We were about to score two times, two out of three. So we got to get it back from defense. We got to maximize on offense. Thank you, Coach. That is one fired up Jimbo Fisher. He said a mouthful right there. Yeah. Texas A&M leading it 7-5 to five as we go to the studio with Dari, Chris, and Gene Chiswick.
Bit of a slugfest in the first half at Kyle Field in college. Bit of a slugfest in the first half at Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. The Aggies up by just two, seven to five. As we get ready for the start of the third quarter, Mike Morgan, Andre Ware, Taylor Davis, and Andre, this is exactly the kind of first half you want if you're Vanderbilt. Too many mistakes for Texas A&M. Yeah, a lot of self-inflicted wounds, Mike. We're here on the kickoff. Chase decides, Chase Lane decides to bring it out, and that turns directly into field position, the advantage for the Commodores. Andre Mitz causes a, forces a fumble here. Vanderbilt's gonna get field position again. An excellent pass rush, and then yeah, that's Anaya Smith doing his thing in the open field, but he decides to bring a punt out of the end zone. And here we get a look at it right here. It also a block in the back, which rewards Vanderbilt with points. A safety is called because the foul was committed in the end zone. So a lot of self-inflicted wounds by the A&M Aggies. A good thing, Mike. They get the ball first, and they can fix things in a hurry. And that might help improve their first-half stats, which are brought to you by Zaxby's. Who would have thought Vanderbilt dead last in the SEC in offense a year ago, outgaining the Aggies in that first half. Again, crucial mistakes by the Aggies keeping this game close, and we'll now see if Vanderbilt's defense can remain salty in the second half. But I, I want to know... Andre Ware, what are we looking for out of Kellen Mond and this explosive A&M offense yeah, in the I second find half? The, I find the playmakers. The running game with Spiller, Anaya Smith, get him the ball in space to let him operate. And Jalen Watermeyer, he needs to touch the football a lot more than he did in the first half. Watermeyer had just two catches for 19 yards in the first half. Mond out of the shotgun, feeds the tail back, cutting back. This is Spiller. Spiller weaving his way through traffic in the open field. Spiller with one man to beat. Down the 40, past the 30, and inside the 20-yard line. Finally knocked out of bounds by Maxwell Worship. Well, you go to guys that have made plays for you. A fantastic job by the offensive line. A little zone blocking and it allows Spiller the cutback lanes. And then it's just all Isaiah Spiller in the open field, power speed. Excellent job down the field by this receiving core of Texas A&M. It's Kaufman pushing him out of bounds after a 58-yard run. That's ball exactly spotted what at you, the 18. Exactly what you wanted if you're Texas A&M and Vanderbilt the worst thing that could happen to you. Spiller Burrow is his way for a yard. Orgy on the stop for the Commodores. And I say that Mike because now you're backed up. It's it's a shot in the arm for the Aggie offense that's been kind of sputtering a little bit or sputtered in the first half. And now you get them rolling a little bit with a, that run with some confidence. 58 yard run the longest play for the Aggies in this game now second down at nine Mond gets out of traffic tosses underneath at the 10 5 touchdown Caleb Chapman Well, you go all the way back to the open, and we talked about Kellen Mond being able to make plays off schedule. He gets flushed from the pocket. Nice job by Chapman of just finding an area of the field and showing his numbers to the quarterback, and right on the money was Kellen Mond. That is the response every Texas A&M fan wanted to see. You think that little paint peeled off the locker room walls at halftime, <laughs> Coach Fisher? Yep. <laughs> Coach Fisher was fired up with our own Taylor Davis. I can only imagine what he told his team in the locker room. Three-play, 75-yard drive. The Aggies, Kellen Mond, tosses a touchdown pass. 14-5 our score. Nueva Frontier.
Tirex Gear. Diseño que combina con todos los terrenos. Aggies on top, 14 to 5. There is no normal in 2020. We've certainly learned that. Well, at the half, the fight in Texas Aggie Band, that's not them performing live. In fact, this is the first time, you got to go back 1894 when we started football at AM that they did not perform live at the half, so they pre recorded. And here they are watching on the Jumbotron, kind of evaluating their performance. I'm, I'm no band expert, Andre, but I'm going to give them two thumbs up. I'll give them two thumbs up. I was captivated with them uh, in last year's bowl game against Oklahoma State in the Texas Bowl and uh, I actually have a recording on my phone because you know you just don't see what they do all the time and it's a it's a special group to watch and I know you don't get fascinated by stuff easily you're not a social no. media guy you're nope. not recording everything you're not posting pictures on social media for Andre Ware to get his phone <laughs> out and record that says something. Yeah, it was a pretty special performance, and I uh, enjoy, enjoyed it thoroughly. Usually I'm I'm somewhere trying to find some food in the press box <laughs> at the half, but I, I stayed through that entire performance. Let's see the performance of this Vanderbilt offense here to start their first drive of the second half as we say hello to Taylor Davis. I spoke with Derek Mason about this offense. He said he's been super pleased with their productivity in the first half, other than some key mistakes. He said the offensive line is doing a great job, wants to continue to see them create those gaps for the hard pounding running game they're showing and keep the pocket clean. He wants to see the pass game start to come together this half. Taylor, good stuff and certainly got to be happy with that offensive line and the job that they did. And we talked about this at the top. They're a bit of a revamped line. You've got a starting guard in Drew Birchmeyer, number 57, who actually was a defensive lineman last year. But they felt like they needed some girth up in the middle. You see him playing right guard there. Sometimes you got to do whatever you can to make it right. And so far, so good with this line tonight. They've played well. Seals. Oh, nice Rifles grab. one complete. Beautiful throw and a beautiful catch by the tight end, Bresnahan. Well, they've had some pretty good tight ends come through this program Pinkney being the light Jerry Pinkney of last year but Bresnahan with an outstanding grab there and an accurate throw from the true freshman quarterback Ken Seals he just 14 flat yards out to the first down he flat out threw him open you like what you've seen so far from Seals I, I am because he's taking care of the football placing it properly timing 
And now 13 of 17 through the air is the true freshman Ken Seals, who's from the state of Texas. He's doing exactly what needs to be done in, a, in terms of a, a response drive for Vanderbilt. They need points, take care of the football, manage the game, and lead your team, and go down and try to get something on the scoreboard to keep you in this game on the road. Going deep down the sideline, and a good recovery there by Miles Jones, jousting all the way and making a great play on the pass. Well, he Outside, is their best cover defense, man. Number five, five-yard penalty, results in a first down. But it's going to give, that offsides is going to give Vanderbilt an automatic first down, and you see a good play, and then it's wiped out by a mistake. And so Bobby Brown gets caught offsides. Vanderbilt's going to benefit, and they'll continue with his drive. And the only good news there for AM is that Bobby Brown is obviously back on the field and healthy. Oh, concerning to watch him limp off in the first half. Quick pass caught in the flat at the 40. And lunging forward is Tyrell Alexander, the senior with his first reception. And they like him after the catch. When he get the ball in his hands quickly, he can uh, he can do some magical things for you. Transfer from Oklahoma State. Fake it to Marlowe. And like you said, up in the first half, Andre, these runs by Ken Seals just trying yep. to keep the defense honest. Just keeping them honest. Hey, let you know that if you start crashing down inside a bit too much, uh, we have this in our back pocket. So just reminding this defensive front, the front seven, that you've got to play some sound defense and you just can't get careless. We talked to Todd Finch, offense coordinator. He said he had his eyes on Ken Seals coming out of high school when he was on the coaching staff at Louisiana Tech. Knew already what this young man was capable of. Jitterbug cut that time. And out of the backfield by Marlowe. Run down by Buddy Johnson. Been impressed with Marlowe as well as Wakefield. Talked a little bit about that in the first half and how they've got a nice one-two punch. A guy that can hit the home run for you in Marlowe, and then you've got a thumper in Wakefield. And Todd Fitch is going to find a way to take advantage of both skill sets. Second down and seven from the 25. The drive continues for the Commodores under 10 minutes to play third quarter. Seals. Intercepted. First mistake of the game for Ken Seals. Damani Richardson was there, and I'm not sure where Ken Seals or what Ken Seals was hoping to find there. I'm going to tell you what he was hoping to find, his receiver going to the post. He just decided to take it up the field and into the end zone and on a vertical route where Seals is th clearly, in my eyes, throwing a post route. Yeah, with that kind of body re reaction, he's looking for Cam Johnson to run a post, which would have flattened him out with the throw. Mm -hmm. And Cam decides to run a nine route, just a, just a straight, straight streak right up the field, and that, that burns the quarterback. You see Ken Seals saying that's that's not the right route. Yeah, when you, you have that kind of reaction, the body language right after the, the interception, and then you know, he, he knows that that's not, that one's not on him. Aggies sputtered in the first half with a great opening drive, 75 yards on the touchdown to start off the third quarter. We'll see what they have in store here from the seven. Hand off left side. And spinning his way for extra yardage is Anias Smith. Dangbo on the stop. Five carries and two receptions, so about seven. They'd like to get him in the 15 to 18 touch range. Talking with Daryl Dickey, the offensive coordinator. They want the football in his hands. You that had might. him in the Texas Bowl last year. He was a converted wide receiver. That was his yeah. first game at running back. What he is, he is some player when he's got it in his hands. On second down, Mon going to keep it. And a slide in, wise move by the savvy veteran. The last thing you want to see is Kellen Mon take a shot. 
I think he's really matured into his position. The offense. Four than four players to back. Five yard penalty. Second down. So you may have an offensive lineman that a little too far off the ball and into the backfield. So that run will be negated and bring up second and nine. It's a veteran line. If, sorry, Andre. They've, they've got four guys who have over 500 snaps. That's one of just five teams in the league to have that much experience. Really wanted to improve in terms of pass protection from a year ago where they just gave up. Way too many sacks for Coach Fisher's liking and spent a lot of time in fall camp working on pass protection. They think they've got the best five up front. On. They'll try and plow ahead in the waiting arms of Deshaun Jerkins. You mentioned the sacks. Texas A&M has been sacked 65 times the last two years. That's the fourth highest total. And all of the FBS is something they certainly want to clean up this year. It was, uh, somewhere that number was around 33 a year ago, which is way too many. Aggies one of five on third down. This is third and seven. Come on, out of the gun. Completes it at the 13. Nifty move by Preston, who will find first down yardage and then some. Jalen Preston. Right, this is a guy you love, especially around the red zone. 40 plus inch vertical jump. It's excellent in the open field after the catch. 21 yards on the reception. We'll check out the Vanderbilt injury when we come back from College Station. Nueva Frontier X Gear. Diseño que combina con todos los terrenos. Talk so much about the tradition, the pageantry, the way the fans are involved here at Kyle Field at Texas A&M. And of course, Midnight Yell, one of the best traditions in all of college football. Everything's a little bit different, of course, with COVID-19. It doesn't Kyle prevent Field. the enthusiasm that the student base and the fans have here at College Station. I, I tell you, I actually went to a Midnight Yell years ago, Andre the night before Johnny Manziel battled Alabama trying to beat the Crimson Tide two years oh, wow. in a row. They didn't, they didn't win the second time, but that was my first taste of one of the best atmospheres in all of college football. <laughs> Lots of tradition here at Texas A&M. 
Mon sets up and air mails that one. Bracketed coverage there of Jalen Preston. And that's one of the things that Daryl Dickey wanted to see Kellen Mon improve on, and that's that's deep shots. And one of the keys to this game for Texas A&M were hit the shot plays when they were called and said if we we call up about five of them we'd like to hit two or three and uh, he's really improved in that area and through fall camp and really want to see that so because it makes your offense that much more explosive. Now in Mon now 11 of 19 137 yards on the night and he can do this as well. He can run but he can fumble as well. He dropped it coughed it up and Vanderbilt has recovered. Boy, I tell you, it's been a just a give and take by Texas A&M for every great play they have or good play they have. There's something that rears its ugly head. They're going to take a look at this. Not sure if the right knee was down as he's trying to slide, but it's close. It is so close. It's Jerkins on the tackle. That's Mahoney on the recovery. And it's going to come down to the right really knee of Kellen Mond. Where was that football when it hits? Yeah, and the ruling on the field is a fumble. So if the video evidence is inconclusive, it's going to going to be Vanderbilt's football. Indisputable video evidence to overturn this. We talked about turnovers plaguing this Aggies team last year, dead last in turnover margin. It looks like it's down, but it also could be gliding. And so when you get caught in that gray area where you don't know if he's quite down and it's simultaneous, right? The, the officials will go back to the ruling on the field. And I, I think it's, this is a fumble. It's not indisputable. And they're not See, because it. the knee is not under the foot of the defender at the point where it's kind of frozen. And the ball comes out right at about the same time. That is close. This turns out to be the biggest call in this ball game thus far. And if I'm Vanderbilt and the ball is mine, I'm going to take a shot play. Big turnover. I'm looking to go up top. It's a priceless look on the face. Of the Vanderbilt head coach, Coach Derek Mason, now in his seventh year with the program, he knows what's riding on this call. Mm -hmm. it looks like it's going to stand. The ruling on the field stands. First down, Vanderbilt. Huge Not turnover. Enough. Not enough evidence to confirm it and not enough evidence to overturn it. So the ruling, the original ruling stands and it's Vanderbilt football. So now AM has turned it over twice. They've surrendered a safety on a punt return, something you hardly ever see. Oh, this is a perfect spot, Mike, to go up top. Nice little play action and let's, let's dial one up. Go to the ground instead with Wakefield. It's just so, so tough to go about your business when you don't push the ball down the field and threaten the defense. And I know he tosses the interception, but that's a mix up with a with a wide receiver. You know, you talk those things through and you come back, but but you can't just eliminate that from uh, from your offensive playbook. Got to be it's willing good. to take some shots. That's a good point. I mean, even the interception, it wasn't a bad throw. It's clearly two guys not on the same page. He hasn't missed many throws tonight. Seals again going to hand it off to Wakefield, and again, no daylight. And third down and 11. Another tackle for Leon O'Neill. Yeah, because what happens is you see a bunch of bodies, guys creeping into the box late. You got seven there already, and you're bringing an eighth guy up. To, uh, to defend the run because you know Vanderbilt's not going to push it down the field. So maybe the recipe for running the football is to spread them out and at least give the uh, the vision that you're going to throw it and then hand it off underneath. Commodore's 4 of 10 on third down. It's third down and 11. 
Four wide formation. The freshman seals, goes underneath, complete, and that will be good for a first down. Abdur Rahman with his third grab of the night. Here, Abdur Rahman on a crossing route and a nice job of improvising. Boy, so close for Buddy Johnson, but just can't get a hand on the football and have a fresh set of downs. 16 yards on the hookup. No gain on the carry. Good to see that big guy back in action. Man in the middle of this AM defense, and they've got another, another player down. You know, it is the first week. I know we've, we've been watching college football for the last few weeks, but again, it's the opening week for the SEC. These players haven't had game conditions in quite some time. A lot of bodies down thus far. Commodores on the move. Frontier X Gear. Diseño que combina con todos los terrenos. Good stuff. Of course, Mike Bobo, the new offensive coordinator for the Gamecocks, former Georgia OC. Reuniting with Bill Muschamp, the head coach. As Vanderbilt goes back to the ground game. And Javion Marlowe brought down by Buddy Johnson. It's just been a nice... Vanderbilt's done a nice job of hanging around in this game. Now you want to... You want to see some explosive play. Get Marlowe out in space, maybe. We got a third down at eight here. Kind of spread it around. Really not a true go-to guy. You just got to have somebody win and man-to-man, which is all this is. Cover one. Pressure for the backside. Pass is complete. Boy, nice nice throw. throw. Good grab. Boy, back shoulder. We call it a fade stop when I was at Houston. 
but it's an intentional underthrow, throwing to the back, back shoulder of the receiver to stop him in his tracks, and the, the uh, cornerback's up the field. 14 yards on the hookup to Ramon, who's become the favorite target tonight of Ken Seals. That's his fourth grab. You see that tempo change. They go right to the line of scrimmage. A little bit too fast for me. <laughs> That's something Todd Fitch did a lot of at Louisiana Tech. With Skip Holtz, a lot of up-tempo, a lot of no-huddle. Try to keep the defense off guard. See another Aggie defender limping off the field. That's Jaden Peavy. Yeah, we you talked about Todd it earlier. Fitch. I think Derek Mason just absolutely hit a home run with his yeah. hires, with these two coordinators, Fitch and, and Coach Roof. Now Fitch is a great story. You know, he he was a player at Ohio Wesleyan back in 1982. He was new to the program. The guy that helped him really acclimate was the football manager. That was Tim Corbin, one of the premier baseball coaches who's won two national championships at Vanderbilt. They've been reunited at Nashville. Second down and six. Feed to the near side. Oh, not a much shot. there. A whole lot of pad popping going on as Marlowe goes down and Buddy Johnson continues to rack up hard hits. Yeah, the quarterback of this defense and one of their leaders comes up big time in space. Well, you can hear the pads popping and just stops Marlowe right in his tracks. I think he Johnson spends a little time in the weight room. Yeah, just a little bit. That's, two, that's a chisel 240. Not a whole lot of body fat on that frame. Another third down of the drive. Third and five. Seals on a rollout. Looking deep. End zone. Caught it. Touchdown. What a throw. And another grab by Abdur Rahman. How about the throw from the true freshman quarterback, Ken Seals? And this is on the move, and he puts it about the only place that he could put it for it to be a completion. Running out of room, over the outstretched hands of the defender, and what a job by Ramon getting his feet down in bounds. I know I've been impressed by the freshman Ken Seals, but when a Heisman Trophy quarterback Andre Wares is impressed, it's that's just another way, story. Yeah, it's the way he's carried himself through this game, no highs, no lows. They're just kind of going about his business and, and doing his job, and no moment's been too big. You're talking about making your first start at Kyle Field here in College Station. This season, for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities, all state will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, all state. And Vanderbilt says thank you very much yeah. for, an a, for the fumble on another yeah. turnover on the Aggies. It's now a two-point game at 2.45 to play third quarter. And Ken Seals, the freshman quarterback, true freshman quarterback, has grown up in front of our eyes, Andre. Yeah, I went to school right here in Texas, and we talked about it, 57, over 5,700 passing yards, 53 touchdowns in his high school career. So the guy has thrown the ball around, and you see why he was such an attraction, not only to Vanderbilt, but so many other schools around the country. Love his Nine. composure. Absolutely. Does not look like a freshman tonight. Nine play drive, 43 yards, the touchdown after the AM fumble. Vanderbilt is able to keep this a, a low scoring slugfest which really favors the Commodores. They are right on schedule in terms of where they wanted to be in this football game. Derek Mason told us somewhere in the fourth quarter, we, we are within striking range. That's good enough for us just with, a, with an opportunity and a chance to win. And, and they have put themselves certainly in that position. You know what's impressed me as much as anything about Ken Seals tonight? After he threw the pick, our crew did a great job getting a shot of him on the sideline. And he's yeah. still smiling like, hey, it's okay. No biggie. We'll move on. And he has.
to the ground game on first down and nothing doing. Spiller in the big pause of Rashawn Wilkins. Yeah, the junior college transfer. They said he's just mean. Just a mean player. Just angry all the time when he puts the helmet and shoulder pads on. And he's just gotten better since his time. He's, he's since he's been on campus. He's really earned the respect of his teammates. Commodore showing blitz on second down. They dial it up. Mon, quick throw, and completes it. Diving grab at the 30. That's Chapman again. That's his third reception. He's mostly a special teams player, Chapman, in 2019. And with all this youth, he's kind of climbed the depth chart and uh, made his way on the field. Caught a touchdown pass earlier. And he can really, he's got great speed. He can really take the top off of defense. Now it's the Aggies on third down. Two of six tonight. And a timeout call. Yeah, make sure you got the right play called here on third and four with the momentum on the side of the Commodores, especially when they have the football. So they're looking for a stop right now. That was actually Vanderbilt calling the timeout. You see Derek Mason giving some of his guys an earful. You see what's gone on in the SEC so far today. Alabama taking care of business against Mizzou. The score that's going to, yeah, I mean that's the one that's going to stand out tonight. No question about that. A lot of people were picking Kentucky to upset Auburn. Auburn had other ideas in that game. Rough game for Terry Wilson coming back from injury. Florida six touchdown passes for Kyle Trask and the Georgia Bulldogs. After falling down early to Arkansas, route the Razorbacks. We're going to get things in order and made a pretty good fourth quarter or second half of that game against Arkansas. Of course, the game going on simultaneous to ours. South Carolina, Tennessee. Mon up in the middle, completes. One of his best passes of the night as he missiles that one to Cam Brown. Got a big catch earlier in the first half, but this is just a slant, and he, let, he allows it to get into the second window. You can hit a receiver right out of his break in the first one or a line to pass a defender into that second window. And, and Kellen Mond does actually an excellent job of taking Cam Brown into the second window. 16 yards on that hookup. Mond and company from the 46. Four-man rush by Vandy. Pass nice. complete. And Kellen Mond starting to heat up a little bit. That's Chapman again. is a nice job right here quick out where you just put it outside away from the defender who's inside and you still have a little bit of room with Chapman for him to do something after but the play I'm impressed about was the slant the first windows before the DB he throws him into the second window knowing that the defensive back is trying to undercut it I'm gonna win with the football with my eyes take the defender out wide throw you inside and all Cam Brown has to do is run through it for the catch. That's that's playing on another level right there. Ten more yards, another first down for the Aggies on the move, late third quarter. Two-point game. Spiller takes it left side, breaks a tackle at the 40. Inside the 30 and tripped up at the 15-yard line. Finally brought down by Randall Haney. Boy, second and one. It's Spiller time. Nice job up front by the Aggie offensive line. And, hey, he's shaking tacklers. And a nice job in terms of his speed and getting vertical up the field. No wasted movement. Now they're clicking on offense. 
Good way to end the third quarter if you're Texas A&M. The final 15 from College Station coming your way. It's a two-point game. Mike Morgan with Andre Ware and Taylor Davis at Kyle Field, College Station, Texas. The Aggies on the move, sixth play of the drive. Up by two, 14 to 12. Mond is starting to catch fire on this drive. Looking to throw here, all kinds of time, end zone, and overshoots his intended target. Intended for the back, Anaya Smith. That's one he'll beat himself up in terms of film study tomorrow. But he had him. Receivers open, just been a little high at times, but love the way he's sitting in the pocket. Love the the body language. It's relaxed. Now he's just got to put it on the receiver. Chapman has been his favorite target tonight. He's at the top of your screen. Four grabs for the sophomore. Now in motion. Mond in the pocket. Looking end zone again. And in and out of the hands of Smith. Yeah, pretty good play by Alan George in coverage from that cornerback spot. Just kind of waiting on Smith on an out and up. It was a nice job of just kind of getting the football out of there. Good coverage by Orgy, the sophomore. Thought it was George 28-26 starting to look the same to me. 
they really like Anthony Orji. They believe yeah. he's he's going to be a dude. He's a converted safety. Now third down and ten, and moving on the line. The the miscues continue for the Aggies. I don't know. This may be this may be Vanderbilt jumping and influencing Carson Green to move. The layup game. Offense, number 11, five-yard penalty, third down. Well, maybe Odangbo got a sense that the clock was going to run out. He was going to get himself a freebie. Right. I think Jimbo Fisher is going to have a, oh, a yeah. lot to work with in film sessions this week. Well, that's how you get better. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, you go take a look at what you did wrong, and, uh, and you got to fix things, and you got to do it in a hurry. Because next Boy. week, they're, they're traveling, and it's a big one. The next two weeks, really. Mon flushed out, looking to run. And inside the 10, some tough hits all the way to the seven-yard line brought down by Orji. Well, when you have a quarterback that can give you that every once in a while, you're not asking Kellen Mon to do that you know, over and over again. But when he can do it and it's third down and long, now you get to fourth and two. What do you do it on here, a coach's Andre? mind whether you go for it or not. I think he's going to take the points, no doubt. Yeah. Go ahead and put the, put the points on the board. Yeah, we're talking about a kicker that last year from 40 and under was 16 out of 17. Seth, Seth Small, the junior. And he is true on this one. Now the Aggies settle for three and lead it by five. Still right where they want to be are the Commodores. Let's check in with Taylor Davis. Well, guys, I asked Derek Mason his thoughts on his true freshman quarterback's first half, and he said what stood out to him was his maturity. He said having Ken Seals is like having a 26-year-old quarterback. He said this guy has nothing but composure. It's exactly what I expected. And keep in mind, guys, he's just the third true freshman quarterback in the SEC to start a season opener. And look, even though this place is at 25% capacity, it is still loud, and the Aggie band is directly behind the Vanderbilt side. Line, but he has remained composed. He's constantly communicating with his offensive coordinator as well as his receivers. Really seems like a veteran for a true freshman. Dancing Taylor. around on the sideline to yeah. some some music that's kind of gotten in in his blood a little bit. And he's you know, he, he didn't, you'd never know that he was down by five playing the fourth quarter of his first start. Oh, Love he's it. been unfazed and he's doing it against a pretty stout Texas A&M defense. Another return man taking it seven yards deep out of the end zone and another poor decision. So going to be rough field position for the Commodores. Well, that's tough because, you know, you, you can't have a mistake. You're on the road against a, a tough opponent. You don't want to do anything that, that kind of hurts yourself. Stay in the end zone, get the ball at the 25, and give this freshman quarterback some room in which to work with. You know, watching some of the play earlier today, there, there has been some sloppiness in really the first few weeks in college football. And I just wonder, Andre, you know, no spring football, interruptions with COVID throughout fall. This is kind of what we should expect, isn't it? It really is. Seals, nobody open, just going to fight for whatever yards he can get. Not a bad run. Looks like he's going to get it to about second and medium. But you're right. I mean, from, a, from the standpoint of having really no spring practice, you're you're on and off again, and you don't know, uh, you can't work with guys during the off season and you know throw like you normally would. You're going to have some sloppy starts to the season, and that's exactly about what we're getting tonight. Aggie show blitz, then peel back. Oh, buddy Johnson. Not much doing on the ground for Marlowe again. Buddy Johnson has been stout tonight, the senior out of Dallas, Texas. Well, they get great penetration up front, and that frees it up for Buddy Johnson to be at the in the right place at the right time. And then all he's got to do is wrap up and take the back to the ground. It's 
good work leading, right there. Leading tackler a year ago, 77 tackles, nine and a half for loss. A lot to like about this Aggies defense. Third and six. High throw reeled in, but short of the first down on the reception by Marlowe, who's immediately wrapped up by guess who? Buddy Johnson. It's like there's yeah. five of them out there. Well, shows you his versatility. He plays between the tackles. The play before, he makes the tackle on Marlowe, and then he's out in space, and he's going to tackle him just shy of the first down marker, about a yard shy, and force Vanderbilt to have to punt this football. But that's just, just the versatility of Buddy Johnson on display. Rare three and out for Vanderbilt tonight. That's kind of good to see as well, Mike. You know, we get all these substitutions and you know all these First guys are specialists. The we got Buddy Johnson running around making plays inside, outside, in the passing game, running game. Gear. Diseño que combina con todos los terrenos. Final 15 from College Station. Five point game. 11.53 to go here in the fourth quarter. Vanderbilt elected to punt on fourth down and one. Smith back to receive. Signal for the fair catch on the back pedal at the 23 yard line. Now, the Aggies, again, the offense really struggling in the first half, not just the mistakes, but a lack of productivity. And then all of a sudden, the third quarter, Kellen Mond started to heat up. The running backs, including Isaiah Spiller, started to heat up. And you see from 122 in the first half yeah. to 176 in the third quarter. A half versus just a quarter. And I think Kellen Mond in that third quarter found his rhythm. The receiving core started to get in tune, especially Caleb Chapman with Kellen Mond. Cam Brown caught a, a nice slant in the third quarter, and all of a sudden you've got an offense that has started to move. Isaiah Spiller seven yards away from 100. And this time it's going to be Anaya Smith on the carry. 
Boy, does he got some wiggle in his game. And I think that's his natural position. You get both he and Spiller in the game at the same time. We know that Anaya Smith is an excellent receiving threat, but he can do this as well. This is between the tackles, not just out on the edges. He can hurt you between the tackles with his quickness. I think he's got great balance for a guy at 5'10", 190 pounds. Tough to bring down. Made that switch from wide receiver right before the Texas Bowl last year. And keeping it on the ground this time. It's Spiller breaking free. Over 100 yards on the night. And down to the 41-yard line in plus territory. Tripped up by Jerkins. Well, I tell you what, what a, an excellent job. He's just a smooth runner. Smooth and powerful. Nice cut there and almost got himself freed up for a, a sprint to the end zone. I love the one-two punch of Smith and Spiller. I think that's maybe... One of the best ones around in the SEC doesn't necessarily get as much talk as the others. Timeout on the field, five point game. Nueva Frontier X Gear. Diseño que combina con todos los terrenos. He's only a sophomore, but he continues to make a name for himself. Isaiah Spiller with his fifth career 100-yard game. Well, we know that he can get the tough yards between the tackles, but he's showing you some real versatility. A stretch play that he's going to cut back, and then it's off to the races, weaving through the secondary or the third level of this Vanderbilt defense. And he's going to come right back. Nice little draw play up the middle, breaking tacklers, and is almost in a foot race to the end zone. Isaiah Spiller showing you a lot of versatility tonight. Seven carries, 117 yards, averaging 16.7 yards per carry. Yeah, a couple big ones tonight. 30-yarder and a 57-yarder for the sophomore. False start. Offense number 28. Five-yard penalty. Nice first down. Now we say all that, Mike, but it's still, with 10.44 left to go here in the fourth quarter, a five-point game. Vanderbilt well, is just hanging around. And that's what, you know, when Vanderbilt's at its best, I mean, that's, that's what they do. A couple bowl games under Coach Mason. And, you know, they're, they're not always the most explosive team in the league, but if you let them hang around, they seem to, snake bite somebody every year first and 15 a little slant and reeled in by Jalen Preston the sophomore ball squirts out yeah, it looks like what they may is be the calling ruling? it down but 
They may be worth a look. Initially, I thought they called him down. And, uh, Davion Davis, his reaction. Not sure, not sure when the ball squirts up. Yeah, good luck telling from that angle. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. Davion Davis kind of fought, turned back, and picked the pocket of Jalen Preston. And so, once again, the original call on the field was a fumble. Uh, if, if, if this is the, the best angle, I don't know how you're going to overturn this. He just sneaks back into the play and rips it out. And he's not down yet. He he's you've, By the time he's down, yeah. it looks like the ball is, has escaped his possession. And yeah, they held him up long enough. You got a bunch of Vanderbilt arms just trying to rip it away. If it stands, it would be the third lost fumble of the night for the Aggies. On the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. The previous play is under review. I just don't know how this gets overturned. And we're in a similar, similar situation as uh, earlier in the night where the ruling on the field actually stood. So. I think that's what's going to happen here because there are a lot of bodies yeah. in there and you're searching for a knee or a hip or something mm -hmm. to be down and you just can't find it. One last look here. You see Anthony Orgy in there and then Davis peels back and you don't know really when he has the ball. So you really can't tell where, when the ball comes out. So. That there's no video evidence to, to give the ball back to A&M. And uh, I think the ruling on the field is going to stand once again. Boy, you are this Aggie offense playing with some fire, Mike. Allowing Vanderbilt to hang around and turnovers. And the last fumble they had, they took it down. And all of a sudden, Seals puts it in the end zone. Looks like this one is going to stand. Another fumble for Texas A&M. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Vanderbilt. Now, you know, the Aggies have outgained Vanderbilt 351 to 251. They've had more chunk plays. But at the end of the night, this is what has kept Vanderbilt in this game. Three fumbles, not to mention the safety which almost acts as another turnover. And, and some of it's coached. I mean, I know Mon's fumble came out, but that one, that's that's a coached fumble where Davis sees a receiver that's up. He's being held up, get a big arm in there, rake it out, and he's able to get the ball on the ground or actually come up with a fumble. Now Ken Seals, the freshman, goes to work under heavy pursuit and wisely just throws it away. And that's why you like... That's why you like Seals, because even with things flying around, all around him, he's still on, he's still composed. Nice job of stepping up in the pocket. He sees a defender coming right at him, holds the ball, trying to still find a receiver downfield. Okay, it's not there. Let's just throw it away and play on second down. It's heavy pressure by Andre White, sophomore by way of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You get the sense he's just having attack. fun. He's just having yeah. fun back there. I mean, if he is nervous, he's certainly not showing it. Misfires on that throw. Great coverage. Cam Johnson really could not separate that time. They're going to have to find someone that can beat man-to-man -man coverage. You know, last that year... Really had, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I was going to say, last year, you, you had Lipscomb. You had Pickney. Yeah. I mean, these were pro-type weapons, not to mention Keyshawn Vaughn, who's in the NFL. They're still trying to figure out who their best weapons are right now. you got to find Pierce, Abdur Rahman. Someone got to come up with a big play right now. Quick drop. Heavy pressure. Going to get out of the pocket and going to tuck it and run. 
Gets rocked at midfield, but good yardage. Hansford on the stop for the Aggies. His decision time for Derek Mason. A lot of time on the clock, but you don't know what's going to happen going forward. You have the football now. It's fourth down and about one to pick up the first down here. And he just put his body on the line on the line to pick up that first down. That shows some confidence in this offensive line right here. I love this call if they do wind up snapping it. I don't think they're going to snap it. Not yeah. with him being under center. Wakefield wow. behind him. They do snap it, and it's play action to Wakefield. First down, beautiful call by Todd Fitch, the <laughs> OC, and beautiful execution by the freshman. Todd Fitch, you sneaky devil, you. I mean, he goes under. I'm thinking he's just going to bark out signals, try to get the Aggies to jump off sides. They do snap the football, and he's able to get Wakefield leveraged outside of the defense. What a call by Todd Fitch and Derek Mason. And the Commodores are in plus territory under nine minutes to play a one-possession game. Seals, hands off Wakefield, gets to the edge, shoved out of bounds. Another tackle for Buddy Johnson, but a good pickup on the play. I mean, there was no way because you, you can you can go back and count on maybe about three fingers when Ken Seals has gone under center. Everything's been basically from the gun. And then you, so you, he's got you fooled thinking, oh, they're just going to not snap it and bark signals. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Oh, boy. Defense number five. 15-yard penalty wow. from the end of the run. First down. That's on Bobby Brown, and that is a crucial mistake. All right, just a couple of instances where this Aggie football team is self-destructed. And find Bobby Brown. He's not. You can't miss, miss him. There he is, the bottom of the screen, right in the back. Of Drew Birchmeyer. Completely Way away unnecessary. From the yeah. yeah. I mean, what you... Big mistake. Now first down. And lowering the shoulder and plowing ahead is Wakefield. You know that comment I made earlier in the game about you get to the fourth quarter, you stop taking him on about mm -hmm. his shoulder pads. Yep. It's it's about it, it has happened. He is delivering the blow now coming downhill. 6 1, 225, fifth year senior out of Jacksonville, Florida. We'll get a breather here. Commodore is in the red zone. With time. Seals now, no time, brought down. That's when you got to be coached up to the point of, hey, get rid of it. You get to the top of your drop, the ball's got to come out because you can't pump any momentum into this A&M defense. More than enough time to sail the football, and you should be stepping up to escape because the pressure, you feel it coming from the outside, it's a step up. you got Leal coming full speed from the blind side. You're not going to outrun him. So step up into the pocket or just throw the football away and come back on third down. First AM sack of the night. Third and 17 over the middle. Tipped up in the air and intercepted. Picked off by Leon O'Neill. O'Neill knocked out of bounds near uh, the 40, 15. and that might be a late flag. It is indeed a frustration penalty on Vanderbilt, and now tempers flaring on the sideline. Chris Pierce took an extra shot, and that'll help the Aggies get some more yardage. This lost his composure totally. You got to know where you are on the field. And Pierce, after this is tipped up into the air, he, this young man's played one heck of a game, O'Neal, from his safety spot, but Pierce just loses his composure. You can't elevate and slam someone like that after the play on the First field, foul. let alone on the sideline. You know, you, you go back to that throw. This is one of the few poor decisions by Ken Seals tonight. They're, they're right into double coverage. There's no way he's getting that ball to Cam Johnson. 
Yeah, I think it all started with the pressure on the mm -hmm. sack the previous play, and then you're trying to get it all back at one time, throwing into coverage, as you mentioned. And O'Neill is uh, the benefactor of that. Looks like Damani Richardson might have tipped the ball before the pick. So Vanderbilt unable to capitalize on a golden opportunity inside the red zone, down by five in the waning minutes of this ball game. So now the Commodores defense in need of a stop here. Well, this is when you want your four minute offense to just bleed this clock, but you get points on the back end of it. Bond over the middle. Almost intercepted in and out of the hands of Jalen Weidermeyer. And I got to say, it's not been a great game for Weidermeyer tonight, but in fairness, grandmother passed away recently, probably playing with a heavy heart tonight. Yeah, and a lot of people on from my hometown in Dickinson mourning the loss of Miss Melvina Weidermeyer. I've known her since I was all my life, pretty much. And so, yeah, every time I saw her, she had a smile on her face, followed by a big hug. And she, the one thing I know is she loved watching her boys play sports, and now her grandson, certainly. And my condolences to the Watermeyer family. Absolutely. May she rest in peace, no doubt. On second down, Mont flares it out for side. Nice run after catch by Chase Lane. And two roommates connecting on that throw, Mond. To the young man out of Houston, Texas, Chase Lane, one of the burners on this great receiving core. How about the confidence that Jimbo Fisher, you're up by five points, turnover, and you come out slinging it. That's confidence in your senior quarterback right there that he's going to take care of the football. We're going to go ahead and play out this fourth quarter, trying to get points on this drive, rather than move the football on the ground with Spiller and Smith to really burn some of this clock. Under six minutes to go on third down and one to the ground game. Wow. I don't think so. Spiller brought backwards. Great pursuit by Rashawn Wilkins and cleaned up by Deshaun Jerkins. Well, you called Jerkins his name a couple of times. And I mean, he met Spiller in the hole. Both of them did. Oh, what a heck of a job there. And if you're Jimbo Fisher, do you roll the dice? And go for it here on fourth and one. I think so. I think you give the ball right back to Spiller again and let this offensive line prove its worth. Got the fullback full in. Baldry yeah, in there. And they're going to call a timeout. Second and we will take it with them. 5.03 to go. Things getting very interesting in College Station. Gear. Diseño que combina con todos los terrenos.
Saturday is here, and it's time to represent your school. Show us how big you're going today. Submit your best fan video this weekend to hashtag show your Saturday, and you might just get your 15 seconds of fan fame. Somebody's going to get some fame here in the final five minutes and three seconds of this one. Down to the wire, the Aggies leading Vanderbilt 17 to 12. Aggies going for it on fourth and one. Mon hands it to Spiller, oh fumbled football. I believe Vandy's got it. You gotta unpeel a couple of jerseys and bodies and I mean, every time they have an opportunity to put the game away, the Commodores force a turnover and they don't just force them, they recover. Fourth fumble of the night for the Aggies. The fumble was recovered by Texas a and but the ball was short of the line of game. We turn over on downs. First down, Vanderbilt. So right, it's so not a way, fumble, right? It's but it's still short of the the line to game, which is the first down marker. Yeah. And I just can't believe what I'm witnessing here with this A&M group. Uh, unofficially, now that's actually the fifth fumble, third. Only three recoveries for Vanderbilt, I say only. But the Aggies have put it on the ground five times tonight. They've lost it three times, and it cost them there on fourth down and one. Home run ball on first down, and good coverage on the play. That time by Miles Jones, their best cover man. Well, that was one of the things that Todd Fitch talked to us about, is they wanted to, to make hit some shot plays down the field one-on-one -on -one matchups you're gonna have some of these big body receivers like Pierce make some plays for you and they need it desperately here with about four minutes 50 seconds left they are still within striking range with some great field position to start this drive second down and ten under five minutes to go in this game little dump off pass underneath Aggies read it Aggies stuff it not much doing that time for Marlowe. Another stop for Buddy Johnson, who's been everywhere. Heck of a job as well, Mike, by Leon O'Neill. He really got him to turn back inside, and then every name that you call thereafter was uh, was around the football. But that young man filling the alleys from the safety spot. See him out there in space turn, turn Marlowe back inside, and a bunch of maroon jerseys show up in a bad way. A lot of people tuning in right now that never would have thought this would be a one possession game in the fourth quarter. Third and 11, and the Aggies get a sack. No answer for Michael Clemens, the junior college transfer. They have raved about the fall camp that Michael Clemens has had. Consider one of the best junior college pass rushers coming out a couple of years ago. And it is starting to pay off. All 6'5", 270 pounds of him getting to the quarterback, Ken Seals. Third sack of the night for that Aggies defense. And boy, do they need it to come up in a big way on that drive, and they got him. Fair catch hauled in by Smith. 3.24 to play. Still plenty of time. The Aggies clinging to a five-point lead. Frontier X Gear. Diseño que combina con todos los terrenos.
Kellen Mond looking for his 23rd victory as a starter in his career at Texas A&M. Rather pedestrian numbers for him. Give the Vanderbilt defense credit. They have been stingy and salty tonight to keep take, this a one possession game in the fourth quarter. And taking away opportunities and winning in terms of time of possession. But, you know, now if you're Kellen Mond, it's ball security. That's Those are the two words that are, are first and foremost in the in the in his mind. Vanderbilt does have two timeouts remaining. Nice stick in the hole that time by number 24 for the Commodores. That's Alston Orgy. And that's what you're telling. You're talking about on the sideline. You get to the huddle. You tell your team again before you break the huddle and get to the line of scrimmage. Hey, fellas, hold, let's hold on to the football. And if you're Vandy, I mean, you've got plenty of time here. You force a punt. Two timeouts, mm -hmm. yeah, plenty of time. On second down and nine, Mon from the gun, rolling out left. He's going to keep it himself. And is drilled at the 40-yard line. That's the other orgy, Anthony Orgy. The two brothers have had a big game, both from Rockwall, Texas. So they got a few... Commodores from the Lone Star State shining tonight. Guys getting to come back home in Texas. Some good football. We had a nice conversation about that yesterday. All the good football players that, that go out of this state to other places. Mm -hmm. There was a day and time during the Southwest Conference days that guys didn't leave the state. If they did, they went as far as Arkansas, and that was about it. But Baylor, Texas Tech, UT, A&M, all, all of us played Houston. Rice played in the Southwest Conference and pretty much kept all the talent within, uh, within the state of Texas. Don't forget a triple header next Saturday here on the SEC Network. It all starts with Missouri and Tennessee at noon. We've got Ole Miss battling Kentucky. See if the Wildcats can recover after a tough loss to the Auburn Tigers today. Speaking of recovering, LSU is going to have to do that. They're going to face this Vanderbilt defense, which has played very well tonight. That'll be prime time at 7.30 as well as Arkansas, Mississippi State on the alternate network. And can't say enough about what Mike Leach and his debut did with that Mississippi State team today. Give me the biggest, baddest dude on the block. And let me go toe to toe with him. And that's exactly what Mike Leach did tonight down in Baton Rouge, or today rather, down in Baton Rouge. Mon on third and five, and wide open in the flat is Preston, and he'll lunge forward for some extra yardage, but move the chains for the Aggies. That clock will stop briefly as they move the chains. Once they're set, it starts to go again, but what timing. Confidence in your quarterback. Nice out route, and Kellen Mon puts it right on. Jalen Preston stays inbounds, the smart thing to do. And they continue on with a fresh set of downs. Now if you're Vanderbilt, your margin of error is dwindling to zero. You've got to get a stop here. Only one timeout left, clock ticking away. Under two minutes remaining. Smith stuck near the line of scrimmage, jammed up by a number of Commodore defenders. How much of a luxury is it, though, when you when you have a senior quarterback that you can put the ball in the air with this amount, that amount of time on it with the, the pass to Jalen Preston? That shows a tremendous amount of confidence in that young man, Kellen Mond, that he's going to make the right decision. And it's happened. It had to happen over an entire fall camp that he's made the right decisions, puts puts the ball in the best place for the, and gives A&M a chance to win. And that's been proven out. And that's why exactly why Jimbo Fisher has elected to do that. Otherwise, he would just run this clock with Isaiah Miller and uh, Anaya Smith and try to get out of here. But he's you get in a situation in a third down and long, hey, flip it out there and show some. He's shown the confidence in Kellen Mond. I like what Jimbo told us yesterday. He said Kellen Mond is just a different player. I mean, the yeah. arm is the same. The speed is the same. But the leadership, the intangibles at a different point right now. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. 
against the Vanderbilt head coach. 15 yard penalty. Oh, no. Automatic first down. And you know you have that rule where he can't come on the field and probably giving someone yep, on the field and that's that's what that's what that call is all about right there. Game clock operator trying to get a timeout. Well, you, you go from second and eight to first down and ten. I mean that is it's going to be awfully tough to overcome now with a minute 36 to go. Still got the one timeout left. Probably going to need to call it right after this play. Little eye formation look for the Aggies. Smith dots the eye, gets the carry, and goes down at the line. A lot of bodies around the football, and they're going to maybe spend their last time out. You see that mask of the RTI for on Derek Mason. It stands for relentless, tough, and intelligent. And that's what this entire football team, this entire program, is being built on this season. Andre Mintz, he mentioned it. As we got, we were in a conversation with him. Derek Mason dropped it a couple of times, but that's what he wants to be known for: relentless, tough, and intelligent. Well, I think it's safe to say that his team has been all of that tonight. I don't think many people thought this would be a five-point game. Aggies are going to win it, but they are going to escape in a lot of ways. Derek Mason still fired up. And the Commodores. A valiant effort on the road against a top 10 team, but Texas A&M really picked it up offensively, Andre, in the second half. Yeah, they did. I mean, you, you got Spiller going, Anaya Smith made some plays, Kellen Mond through the air. He made you know, some plays with, Je with uh, Jalen Preston. Uh, Caleb Chapman may be the go-to receiver at 6'5", 195, certainly down in the red zone. And then you had Cam Brown step up. So some young players.